and as artists. So, uh, so I just wanted to welcome you all firstly to my session and I conduct workshops generally. Uh, it's something that I've been doing for some time. Uh, in between I had a break, but uh, yeah, I think it's something that I really enjoy doing uh, talking to uh, younger people and uh, understanding their perspective because I feel that you know uh, the world is changing very fast. When when I came into films, it was like uh, that was the time when film was transitioning into digital, and we were one of the first batches in mind screen, and it was such a interesting phase because uh, we didn't know what was actually going to happen to us after we graduated. But uh, the first the first thing that has happened to me was that I was. Uh, exploring the medium firstly i didn't know where to go i didn't know how to start i think that is something that all of us face uh, as filmmakers uh, about you know what what do we do after we graduate and stuff like that but things have changed a lot since i have graduated and i think i graduated in 2008 january so that's like almost 13 years now i was in the third batch which was one of the first batches to be and it was such a blessing because uh, I was very confused about what I wanted to do in life. And I was a fresh graduate uh, out of, uh, I did my engineering and I came out of IIT and that, but I really wanted to explore the arts. And uh, thankfully I was in Chennai and I got to know that uh, Rajiv sir was starting a film school and I've seen Rajiv sir's name as a child growing up. I watched uh, Bombay, I watched uh, Minsara Kanuvu in Telugu and all of that. And that was, it really motivated me to uh, get into cinematography, even though I had I knew I knew nothing about what cinematography meant. Uh, but I just uh, went in with the thing that okay, I'm a technician, I'm a technical person, I'm an engineer, and uh, it just made sense for me to learn a new craft, which is cinematography, because it just uh, it is it's a technical field, and only because of that I got into mind screen at that point. But I didn't know that that will define my life for the rest of you know all these years uh, so i'm really grateful for that uh, experience because I, I got to meet some really great people who i still talk to connect with uh, uday shankar was in my batch nan son and uh, it was such a uh, it was such a fun environment we really learned a lot and uh, the peer group was great because people were coming from different backgrounds and uh, it was just a short course it was six months and but we got to learn a lot in the technical aspect of things. Uh, before that, is it okay if I ask all of you all to turn your cameras on? Because that way I can see yeah. how you're reacting to me. Yeah. And uh, Sanjay Pankaj, Shiva. That way I know who all you, who you're all. And yeah. Yeah. I'd really like to know you all. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I'll start off with the session. I kind of like. Uh, wanted to talk about my journey because I think that is something that everybody struggles with to understand what do you do after mind screen? Where do we go? How do we start off? Because that's a big question. <laughs> it's like a, I feel that the movie industry is like a black hole. <laughs> it's like, you don't know once you're in, you can't come out kind of thing. Uh, but what we forget is that it's actually an art form and uh, we tend to get lost in the entertainment aspect of it that we tend to forget that it's actually something uh, we forget why we why we came here in the first place. That happened to me time and again, where I would question myself, why am I here? What am I doing? And uh, But every time it would draw me back because this is something that comes from our heart, right? It's come, it comes from our, uh, uh, it's a gift, it's a talent, and we have to make use of it. And it's not an accident that all of us are here trying to do something that is very different from what everybody else does. And uh, in spite of all the difficulties and all those things, we still continue to do this. A lot of people give up in between, but uh, some people do continue and uh, make it in the end. So uh, I'll just talk briefly about my my uh, journey. Uh, yeah. So first thing that I have learned when I came to Mind Screen was that uh, before that. I used to watch a lot of films. Thankfully, in IIT, we had this, the, this at that time, this new thing called LAN came up. And uh, it's the local area, area network. And uh, so suddenly, World Cinema was uh, exploded in IIT at that time because everybody was torrenting movies. And uh, there was this guy in my batch. Uh, his, his pet 
nickname is Piddi, and this guy was like uh, the guru of world cinema. And uh, I, in my fourth year, I started like you know hanging out a lot with him because he would like constantly talk about Spanish cinema, Pedro Almodovar, and like you know uh, Emily and all these movies. And I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this wizardry <laughs> that is going on? And uh, so I spent a lot of time watching a lot of movies in the final year because we didn't have anything else to do. And it was so much fun. It was very different from the movies that I watched when I was in Andhra Pradesh, all these Telugu movies that I've grown up watching, admiring. And I remember watching Roja in the Hindu <laughs> theaters all with all my family and all of these things. But these films look very different. And that really intrigued me. And I was also into theater. I, I'm a theater actor and a theater director. And so uh, it was something that was in me. Uh, so I, I used to perform on stage. Uh, so it was, uh, so art was always inside me, I think. So, but I didn't know how to uh, express myself. I was trying to understand what is the best way to express my creativity. And uh, so watching films gave me, fueled me into the next stage of my life, which is basically take up a job, <laughs> firstly. So after IIT, I took up a job and, uh, uh, I was also doing theater at the same time. Uh, after a point, I, I quit. I was reading a book, and uh, Richard Fenman's book, and I just uh, quit my job on a whim. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was going to do. I made some savings, and uh, I was like, okay, what do I do now? And then I started doing theater. I started, like, I started my own theater group and performed, uh, performed a play in Alliance Francaise. You must know Alliance Francaise. So Chennai is like a, even though I'm from Andhra Pradesh, Chennai has been like my home to me because that's where I grew up as a person, as a, you know, as an artist. So uh, I was doing theater, but eventually, uh, <laughs> eventually it led me to uh, mind screen through one of the people that I was working with. So I'm going to cut short the longer story. I will tell you the most highlights maybe. So in between, I ended up working at Ogilvy and Mather, uh, the ad agency as an assistant producer. And that's where I met the uh, film head of the uh, Nila Krishnamurti, who was the film head. And uh, it really, you know, uh, intrigued me more that I wanted to learn. I was kind of getting bored with theater. So I want to really understand what cinema meant because I really like world cinema a lot. So eventually I ended up in mind screen and uh, I had no idea. I had no, I didn't know what a DSLR was. I didn't know what f-stop meant i didn't know what <laughs> iso meant i didn't know anything so that that's that's how blank i was and uh, i think i had like a pocket camera which i used to take take pictures around at iit at 5 a.m in the morning <laughs> so if you want to see those pictures i'll share them to you later you can personally contact me for that so i went ahead and enrolled myself and uh, i what i I think it was like the biggest decision of my life because that really changed the track of my life. The, it really changed who I was as a person as well. And uh, so first thing is that Mindscreen didn't just teach me about uh, the technical aspects of it because I was already an engineer. I think I understood them a bit easier, uh, maybe compared to an arts person for the arts background or something. So that wasn't my biggest problem, but I think, uh, Every, uh, I think every week we used to watch a movie, new movie. I remember watching Lawrence of Arabia at school and uh, it was, it was epic. And uh, just, just being in a peer group and learning cinema changes a lot because there are these bunch of kids who are like from everywhere, from different parts of the country who've come there to like learn cinema. And uh, that really uh, intrigued me and that really put me in a very, uh, beautiful space and uh, learning in those six months was the best time. I mean, I really enjoyed myself actually because uh, it was something that I really connected with. So the peer group is very important. So that's how, so you guys can like understand that. I mean, I've made pointers. So these are pointers which are, uh, what, what I can say is that these are the main things that have driven me ahead in my life. So one of the core things is peer group. Uh, somewhere uh, I read that, uh, you are the sum total of the five people who you surround yourself with. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Like if you are, you know, if you want to be something, you have to surround yourself with people who will guide you in that direction, who will push you into that direction. If you're going to be with the people who are, say, who enjoy 
uh, say commercial films you will end up getting there like you know but i think it's very important to find your people that's what i'm trying to get at and uh, watching films like i used to go to uh, sorry i forget it now so we used to buy a lot of dvds like, like this black market dvds at that point and watch world cinema i wouldn't recommend it now because we are professionals but uh, yeah try to watch as many movies as you can and understand your genre because it's very important to understand uh where your core strength lies because everybody's core strength is different because everybody uh, everybody likes different kinds of cinemas right like you can't everybody cannot like everything then we'll all be similar like each us each one has their own core strength and i think you need to identify your core strengths so it's important to watch films so that you understand what kind of films you like in the first place because those are the kind of films that will that you'll end up making later right so understand because otherwise you will kind of like get lost i mean that happened to me so i want you to from my experience i can tell you that unless you really connect with the subject i would say don't do it because because if you do it for the wrong reasons you will you, you might not really enjoy the experience so i mean this is my personal point of view so just try to understand where you're coming from what is your stories what are the stories that you connect with what kind of visual styles do you connect with what kind of uh, is is your core strength ad films or is your core strength uh, say uh, say film noir you know what is your core strength you need to understand that so once you start off you will start learning you will understand more and more and more we are very young and there's a long way to go so maybe you can try that and uh, so one thing about me like i said uh, one thing that i really learned from mind screen was rajiman and sir's passion towards art i mean i was so inspired by rembrandt's paintings and rajesh sir spoke about edward hopper and so these things have stayed in my mind you know uh, like you know because uh, they really shaped my creativity honestly and uh, so learning art uh, learning art history and learning the different uh, you know styles of art over the centuries it's very important for our growth as uh, creators like we need to understand what kind of work has been done before because film is a visual form right in the end like we are the ones who are painting the canvas so it's very important for us to understand paintings first and also because i come from a theater background i also understood the uh, performances a little bit so i would say that just because we are we are cinematographers we should not limit ourselves to understand other art forms we should go out and pursue them we should sorry i think i went I'm sorry yeah we should try to understand uh, other art forms like reading books and uh, reading habits are very important we kind of like ignore them but that's so important and uh, music uh, one thing i really love about rajesh sir is that his his knowledge about music he's like he he talks about uh carnatic music he has so many diverse interests so all these have kind of in, inspired me to like learn different understand music but i also come from a music background so what i would suggest uh, advise you guys is to uh try to learn and know different art forms don't just limit yourself to just films but try to learn about different things try to accumulate knowledge about different art forms because that will go into your films because the way you perceive music is the way you will perceive beats like in uh, in uh, when you're shooting films so i would definitely say read books understand art and culture go watch theater plays go go to music concerts because that is where you will get inspiration to uh, to uh, become better at your work so don't limit yourself like what i see is that in film film circles we very much limit ourselves to those little groups and we are we are afraid to go out i think we are insecure to go out and explore other things like the fo fomo we say right the current lingo fear of missing out so let go of those fears try to understand yourself first try to understand where you come from your history and also learning history is so important like we because we are telling stories of people in the end of the day we are not just making some you know abstract paintings we are actually telling stories about people so reading and learning about uh, uh you know people like if you recently i was watching karnan it was such a like i i every shot was like kind of like a wide shot which is very different from you know the regular film format that we used to and there's a purpose why they're doing it 
you know so this is a mix and match of so many things that you learn on the way in your film journey so and then try to understand your philosophy of life what is your philosophy like of life what is what are your ethics what are your uh, uh, value systems what is your moral compass these are all very important things because those will they will go into your work if we are not formed yet completely as people it's very difficult to uh, understand your internal compass so uh, in the these are things that i've learned over time so i'm just trying to like put it all together so this is what i could say what i would say artistic learning because as a, we are artists and i think uh, we sometimes we forget that zone so yes so this would be my first uh, slide if you have any questions regarding this slide you can ask me yeah anybody uh, students because it would be easier for me to yeah like, yeah uh, interact it's it's an interactive session it's not a lecture Wow. Yes. <laughs> so, feel free to ask questions, whatever regarding your subject or any any related things. Now, you make the guest to feel free also <laughs> by asking certain questions. I'm I'm your schoolmate. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can yes, yes. Talk to me. He is just like your brother, your yeah. senior, that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, and maybe we can go to the next slide. Right? Yeah. Yes, Manish, Shivek. Anything? If we, uh, okay, we can. Okay, we can go to the next one. Okay, yes. okay. So, okay, okay, okay. I mean, you can ask me anything, even in the middle, mm. you can stop me and ask, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a very informal thing, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> can, can I, can I, can I uh, yes, talk? Sir. Yes, sir, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, fortunately, I was going through your talk that you are delivered in uh, 2014 IIT. Are, are you able to hear me? Hello? I, I can hear you, sir, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah. But important uh, thing, what is uh, really mattered in that form is that you were so overconfident when you left mind screen, isn't it? What I have. <laughs> Hello, so, are you able to hear me? I was going, I was. It's, <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Can <laughs> and you have to struggle and find your own way, isn't it? But how things have suddenly yes, sir. got into Definitely. your hand. It is only the uh, uh, your, yes, your acquaintance with certain people, isn't it? So that has brought yes, close to Lucia your your uh, your your, your uh, venture, best venture. Yes, sir. isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so similar things happen to so many people. Okay. Yes, sir. All the film students, they come up from the film institute, they feel that they know better than the people are working in the industry. Only time you will teach them what they have to learn yet. Absolutely. So whatever so you learned in the mind screen 100%. was, yes, yeah, yeah, just the edge of the filmmaking, right? But we were sure that it will rightly guide you. Yes, sir. Okay, but sometimes uh, they should 100%. have a right conduct. That's what I am seeing from everybody's uh, 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 life uh, turning. Just okay. Turning. So people got to wait also yes. sometimes. They, they may not get the right contact. Fortunately, you got a right contact, Pavan mm. Kumar. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I want all our students to watch that uh, uh, um, thing that is there in the YouTube. So after yeah. the uh, uh, 2014, they had interaction with IIT students. 
So I think, yeah. yeah. Anybody has seen it? Yeah, the TEDx talk. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so Hindustan universities. Hmm. Yeah, budding not Hindustan university. IIT. IIT. There's one IIT. Sir. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. There only I could see that you were sitting in the front row and Pawan Kumar was talking first. Then you came into stage, and uh, I could see yes, some of the slides. Yes, yes. So how You're you right, managed to shoot yeah, yeah, the small budget, uh, your clever usage of the equipment and gadgets uh, <laughs> that is within your hand to make. <laughs> and uh, really it makes to wonder the result what you got finally yes sir so uh, only thing i saw the movie also uh, okay, today only today only okay sir i was unfortunate i could not see it earlier but yes, only sir. thing i could not see with the subtitle so i could not really get it it is truly experimental in all the way yes so all the uh, uh young filmmaker they want to do something differently they should watch the talk what you are delivered along with pavan kumar in the iit so what is their aim how to connect yes. the audience with the uh, film what is aim of the filmmaker this are all every film students should learn okay this slide really showing the important elements that will guide the students to go towards the creative side okay travel with will enrich our lives observe yes. spaces architecture light and culture understanding the cameras and lenses money the struggle in real land from experience meeting the people that is important thing. meeting the people and knowing the stories stories become films great <laughs> okay i'm sorry i have taken a lot of time you can continue siddharth no sir please sir. yes sir sure sir so firstly i think uh, i just want to thank at this point i just want to thank dan sekran sir actually because i think uh, he's played a very important role in uh, my life and a lot of other students life because he was always there like we could always count on him i remember many times i would just message him and he would always welcome me and uh, you know even when even before all this lucia everything so i'm really grateful for his uh, learning under him because it was such a beautiful experience and uh, such a knowledgeable person and uh, it's a blessing to learn under him yeah thank you sir <laughs> i just want to thank you <laughs> so uh, so uh, after my uh, mind screen it was such a sir emerge sir konja unga mic i was very overconfident oh, like sure. Yeah. Yes. Sir. So after 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 my screen, I was I was the I was the brat, I was the IIT boy <laughs> who <laughs> learned cinematography in six months, and uh, I was not ready for what was going to come after that. <laughs> I was super confident that I'll become a cinematographer tomorrow, <laughs> and it took many years. <laughs> I just want you to know that it took me about 2008 I passed out, the, and then I think I made my first film in 2012, which is still a short time. compared to what regularly people happen and it ha- only happened because of the digital revolution i will <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't have happened uh, i've learned by falling and i think error you know you know there's a method i forget the name now it's like uh, trial and error sorry yeah so because there was no unfortunately for our fil- for us filmmakers there is no script given it's not scripted like for example if you're a software engineer it's easy like okay you apply for jobs and then you get a job and that's it but it's not like that the struggle is very real uh, you will have friends all your friends doing very very well <laughs> and you are like uh, sitting and like what what do i do in my life <laughs> and uh, so money is a big problem you have to figure your your way out so thankfully for me after i graduated from i mean i graduated from mind screen i uh, got an opportunity to work uh, as a photographer for mahindra holidays Uh, and that's what i did for 2 3 years so thankfully that formed the base and like like sir said and i would definitely watch for it that people are all that makes you go ahead in life it's not you can have the most uh, amazing talent in the world but if you're not a people's person it will be quite difficult and if you're not able to express yourself it's going to be very difficult okay because there's such a com- it's become such a competitive field right now that you have to market yourself gone are the days when talented people were like 
put on a pedestal. When I first joined Mindscreen, there were like hardly not many cinematographers. It used to be the same people doing many, many films. But now every film has a new cinematographer. <laughs> and uh, it's almost like Nancy Kransar would say that Bamma Varada, that's the thing. <laughs> it's become like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you put the camera <laughs> and you have such ISO levels that you, uh, natural light looks good and then you can like go put it on Da Vinci and do whatever you want with <laughs> orange and teal you can give whatever look that you want in life <laughs> so but that's not uh, that's not the only thing about cin then we are not cinematographers then we are like wedding photographers right because but that's not what we want to be <laughs> right we want to be creative people. We want to be like Roger Deakins and we want to be like, you know, all these big, big DOPs that we see. But uh, so if the struggle is real, it will take a long time. It will take uh, a long time. So be prepared for that. So these days I meet a lot of young people, like 21 year olds and 22 year olds. One of my assistants is here who fought with me once saying that I want to be a, I, I will only work if I'm a cinematographer, writer, or director. <laughs> and I laughed. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah, you wait till you're 30. <laughs> so, so it's going to be like a long journey. So be be prepared for that. I mean, I would definitely say be prepared for it. Don't just think that people are going to give you work because just because you graduated from mind screen and you learn from, you know, good teachers and all of that because uh, everybody's journey is different. My journey is different. And everybody's journey is different as much as possible. Like meeting people is very important. Promote yourself on Instagram, promote yourself on Facebook. I was a very shy person. But Okay, I don't know exactly. I think I'm an introvert. People and con it, you should be very, uh, 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 you should convey your ideas very well. Otherwise, people are not going to take you seriously. You have to be able to talk. You have to be able to communicate. Uh, and uh, tough. Uh, try to enjoy your journey as you go ahead. And uh, observe spaces, architecture, light. Uh, one thing that I, um, one thing that I uh, I have learned in my uh, travel photography work, uh, observing spaces. It naturally started happening to me. Uh, that is why I could make a film like Lucia, which was very natural, became my style, right? Uh, when I observed the work of uh, Caravaggio and uh, Rembrandt, it still looks natural, even if it is a painting, right? So that is where I kind of found myself, found my art. And uh, only in 2017, when I went to do my MA, that was the first time I watched a Caravaggio painting live. I mean, the artists who I've admired in, 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 in Ireland, in the Museum of Art in Ireland. And uh, so that's the thing. Life will always come around and surprise you with good things. All you need to do is stay put. You know, keep keep doing what you're doing. Learn. Learn every day. So this is that I have learned that every day you have to learn. Every day you have to go out and read. Every day you have to go and uh, read something new. Nowadays, technology is it's, it's in, in I personally do every day that I read about everything under the sun. Because that goes into your world. Right, that goes into your cinema and uh, all of that. So learn from your experiences. Their experiences happen for a reason. Try to uh, gain from these experiences. It's very important. And uh, recently, I read something like, uh, when something happens to us, we're like, why is it happening to me? But it shouldn't be that. It should be about why is it happens. You know. So there will be good experiences, there will be bad experiences, but try to learn from them and try to make yourself a better artist. Better and meet people, know this stories because truly stories become movies about people, not a man's and tigers, right? 
So I think uh, that's we, a different story. This is my second slide. So, is anything that you no, guys want to know? So that uh, I think your uh, connection is not stable because it, uh, your voice gets break. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. I'll try to maybe connect with a different. Uh... Is it okay now, sir? Is it better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it all right? It's, it's not better. Better. In between, in between, it goes off and comes. It's better. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay this is. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Any, uh, I mean, if there are any questions that anybody wants to ask. Smatika. Yes, sir. Uh, no questions at the moment. Okay. You are conscious. Uh, Siddhartha. Yes. Yeah. Ah. So sometimes, uh, yes. like I have realized that experiences sets you back. Like, yeah, obviously there are good and bad experiences. So sometimes bad experiences sets you back and you like, you sort of uh, feel like drawing back. So how, like, sometimes what happens is uh, I know what, what, what to do. I might know, like I can do that better from someone. But I feel like I'm not uh, that confident enough to do that. So how to, you know, uh, conquer that struggle, basically, like how to feel about that. I'm confused about that. Yeah, you are muted. So your voice is not audible. You are to, uh, uh, can, you, to... Can, can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So uh, this is something that I've faced time and again, and I think every uh, creative person goes through it, okay? You're not the only one. Uh, this is a self-doubt, right? This is called self-doubt, that's the question. We all have this question that, am I good? Yeah. <laughs> this is a question I keep, even now I ask myself. So <laughs> there is no escaping that. This is something that we will face every uh, few days or every day sometimes. But uh, I think uh, that is the thing. You need to find yourself first. You need to find you, who, what your strengths are, right? You need to find your, identify yourself with a certain kind of style or whatever. But the, the thing is that we also be, keep changing as people. We also keep becoming, uh, our, our interests keep changing. Our uh, favorite art keeps changing. Favorite music keeps changing. So you need to like understand that you, you will keep on changing throughout for the rest of your life. All right. But that is your growth. So we need to embrace that. We need to embrace that. Look, when I'm in, in my 20s, I'm going to be a different person. When I'm going to be in my 30s, I'm going to be a different person. Uh, the kind of uh, movies that I watch now are very different from the kind of movies that I watched 10 years ago. Right. Uh, yeah. Some things might remain the same. But a lot of things keep changing as we grow older. Our needs keep changing. And that is a natural thing. And, uh, but I think understanding that it is that process, understanding that it is natural order of things, right? That is how things work, can help you understand, become a better, uh, will be able to help you deal with these things better. And also one more thing is that uh, you asked about compa comparing yourself, right? Yeah, sir. So uh, when I was in mind screen, I felt that I was not good at all. I was, there was this assignment which uh, Sir gave, uh, Nancy and Sir gave, and it was, we had to take pictures. I don't re exactly remember. And uh, I felt that mine was not good at all. Like I, was, I thought I was the worst. <laughs> and uh, Rajiv Sir counseled us. He called us individually, each person. and. Uh, I was so upset that day because I was I, I looked at other people's work and they were so good. Like I was like, man, these guys are so much better than me. And I went to Sir and I said, Sir, I don't think I'm good enough. <laughs> and he said, uh, don't take that mistake of comparing yourself with others. Know your, know your style. That's what Sir told me then. And it has stayed with me. If I'm able to tell you right now, 
that's the answer <laughs> thank you sure no anything else uh, can you give some tips on like people management like you know we have to be very clear and communicative about our ideas but it's not just us working and there's a whole crew that we have to communicate our ideas to and it's like it's it's very important to get everyone's cooperation also so can you give me some tips on how to handle it because we've all been like individuals and it's different when you work as a team absolutely uh, so when i was in my early 20s uh, i was too individualistic and uh, i was i enjoyed people's company but uh, maybe i was too overconfident or something i don't know but i don't think i, I loved dialogue right uh, but this is something that you can uh, once you grow older once you grow like you know go through life experiences you will understand that other people have some meaningful things to say as well and you will also so every day so even if my if i'm when i'm talking to my assistants right i learn a lot from them also all right because they are different people all right uh, they are different so everybody has their own story right uh, everybody has their own journey and i think once once we embrace the fact that everybody has their own journey we will be open to understand trying to understand them but before all of that you need to find yourself like you know uh, find your core like the like as i spoke earlier right find yourself first and then you will be able to like uh, be open to accepting others uh, so on a film set like you said absolutely right there there will be like 100 people and as the cinematographer you are the technical head of the <laughs> crew <laughs> there is no running away from this that you have to start learning how to uh, engage uh, with people and i think uh, being open to other people's ideas other people's uh, uh, of course you need to be assertive so there is a term called assertive have you heard of this uh, hello yeah okay go on yeah yeah so there is a term called assertive nature all right where you will uh, assertive assertive nature basically like where you are putting across your ideas firmly gently but not to scare people off right it's uh, it's a nature that you have to develop all right so it is something that i learned that i have to become like that because in my initial years i was a travel photographer travel photographer you can go by yourself and like you know take your pictures you're all alone okay but uh, once once i started working on films one of the reasons uh, i think i was also like uh, very intimidated on my first film experience i will say it right now i didn't want to go there but i will say it so my first film experience was uh, on a, a mainstream commercial malayalam film and uh, i uh, it was happening in polachi and it is happened immediately after i graduated from main screen and uh, i think i was the first person to get placed and uh, it was i was very excited i went on set i was like super excited for my first film set experience but it left me really scared <laughs> because it was so intimidating it was so intimidating because there all these veterans right all these experienced uh, uh, camera assistants and camera you know say, i was very scared man like i was this i think i was like 21 or 22 or 22 whatever and i was super scared i ran away from there <laughs> this is what happened this is a true story <laughs> i didn't want to say it but that's what happened <laughs> so all my overconfidence went down the hill on the first <laughs> experience itself so maybe i was not tough enough you know so that's when i questioned myself should i really do this for the rest of my life if it is going to be so difficult should i really do this okay so thankfully i got this travel photography gig and it kept me going finances kept going and all of that and i i was okay i was okay uh, uh for two three years but i learned a lot about uh, uh about uh, uh travel and like all these things that i spoke about all right so uh, so that was good but over a period of time once i started working in movies thankfully my first uh, couple of films were with friends my debut film was with was is a movie called software hardware kya yaro i don't know if you uh, guys have gone through my imdb
but uh, that was my debut film it was a very small film but it was made with my best friend all right and he had no choice but to hire me <laughs> i'm just kidding i mean uh, it was uh, it was a good experience because it eased me into films back again i was really scared and ran away at one point but thankfully my second chance came uh, when i worked on uh, with my friend and immediately after that i got lucia so thankfully i think i worked with a lot of my friends and that gave me the confidence uh, maybe if my first film was with a very somebody who i didn't know i probably wouldn't have had that confidence to sorry your voice is not yes, to do what i wanted to do and the space can you hear me can you hear me okay okay no, so uh, you can hear me now right yes yeah. yes so that's why i said peer group is important like sir said your friends are important because uh, at least in the first few films i think it will give you that confidence to do what you want to do so thankfully for me that's how it worked out generally that's how it happens your first film will always invariably be with your friends <laughs> or people that you know very well because somebody has to have the confidence in you right <laughs> to give you the camera <laughs> so <laughs> only your friends will give you that i think at least i mean in my case that happened and i believe once that once you get that confidence no you will start becoming assertive like start putting yourself as the leader of the pack okay because as the cinematographer you are the lead second in lead second in command you're the prime minister so <laughs> yeah so uh, that's what build your uh, start working with your friends like don't be a lone wolf lone wolves will not go anywhere we are not painters we are not painters we are filmmakers and filmmaking is a collaborative process and uh, invariably you have to become a people's person because you will have to communicate with the actors you will have to communicate with the you know uh, director you have to communicate with the production designer uh, there are so many roles that you have to be in charge of like and they have to do what you tell them it's not the other way around <laughs> like they cannot come and tell you look i have only this you can it doesn't work that way <laughs> does that answer your question yes sir it does okay sure thank you you're welcome yeah any other questions siddarth sir i believe that there are lot of slides to show no sir it's not just two three slides sir it's not, not okay <laughs> okay okay so this only slide yes they they like two three more i think yeah okay yeah. okay so okay. i can just Carry. go through it i think the first slides are only very important i think the rest are all just uh, okay okay after that <laughs> okay. Okay. okay so if, uh, so we can go to the next one so uh, so thankfully after uh, so my next uh, important event in my life is life of pi and uh, this kind of got me back into films again and uh, i would uh, this kind of changed my perspective towards films as well because when i ran away from films earlier uh, it was uh, it was quite traumatic <laughs> i didn't want to come back but thankfully uh, again through a friend of mine i got a call one morning and he said siddhartha sid uh, i i'm going to give you something which will probably change your life and i'm like what is it <laughs> and is like uh, life of angli is going to shoot a film in india so do you want to you know get into it so i applied for it and i got through and i was a vfx pa a production assistant but uh, uh, but it really changed my perspective towards films all over again this time because i worked with a very international crew I was winning uh, working with oscar winners and like you know great filmmakers i was the so the first day on set i was with uh, I, I, we were shooting in pondicherry and i was in a tent with uh, ang lee and claudio miranda and uh, uh, and uh, the vfx producer susan my boss and i thought again i thought i arrived <laughs> this <laughs> so this false alarms will keep happening in life <laughs> but it was great i'm just kidding but it was such a great experience because i i was really excited again to get into films uh so international experience helps if that is your forte that's the kind of films that you want to make and uh, 
for the first time i saw a healthy work environment where people were just doing their job and you know not wasting time and stuff like that so this was a good place where i again built contacts right for life and uh, now i have friends in hollywood and like you know in europe and stuff like that so that is something th- like i keep saying this is the this if you see this is the thing peer group is very important peer group is very important so surround yourself with people who will point you in the right direction find your people find your people find your people that's it and uh, the f- uh, last thing is technical finesse so that is something that i think we miss in the indian film industry uh, we tend to uh, do work which is kind of like you know uh, very compromising work but for the first time i saw in in life of pi nobody was compromising on anything it was they got what they wanted and it was done very neatly and you would think that on a hollywood set they'll use hundreds of lights i have seen shots where there were no lights used zero lights uh if you know, I'll, i can tell you the scene as well there's a scene where uh, shavanti's character is introduced uh she is dancing in front of uh uh her instructor then this guy is playing the tabla or something like that that whole scene there were no lights it was probably a ten like very small space they didn't even have space to put lights and all the scenes in the school pretty much zero lights so don't be don't think that i have to use lights to make this thing look good in fact finesse comes when you reduce the number of lights in your in your work okay so i think that's something that i've learned there where i i felt that okay i can i can make a film now so so this was my life of my experience any questions you can ask me. or else actually we can go ahead with the next one and then we can have one section so Uh, after that i did a movie called software hardware ke iro and then it led me to lucia uh so by the time i think i kind of found myself i found my host and it took me this happened in 2012 and uh, so 2008 january i passed away so that's like 8 9 10 11 12 well, like five almost five years so it took me five years to find my host strength what am i what am i what kind of cinematography do i like what kind of uh, work do i enjoy watching you know because that is what you will make in the end right so one of my favorite cinematographers is christopher doyle and vittorio storaro they use color a lot in their films so color was something which was very close to me i really like rich colors and lucia gave me that canvas to mount that so that is why i used color a lot in that film because that is what i spoke to me right so that is where i found my core uh, strength like i understood color well i use color in a very effective manner in order to tell the story of lucia so again thankfully it was uh, pavan is a very creative person and he is very uh, collaborative in lucia and uh, he gave me all the space to do what i wanted to do we, we went and did all the location rectis ourselves we went and uh, uh, check every location uh, and it really motivated me to do my best all right if you ask me if i was if i knew i could do do it the way it came out i didn't know that it was going to come out this way at all uh when i was making the film i thought it was an accident <laughs> so but but it's not i mean i have learned for 5 years and that came out in the film so this confidence issues i did face that she wake even till recently <laughs> am i good enough <laughs> so <laughs> so that question will always be there don't be afraid know that it is your strength and but you need to find yourself and you will keep reinventing yourself again and again and again so reinventing is also very important and uh, so i was just say i'm so sorry to interrupt so you said yeah. that uh, like you really like doing with colors and all so uh, in that lucia only uh, there like there were some parts which was in black and white and in color so uh, how different is the approach to you know light for a black and white image and for a colored image how different is that approach or is is it any different or how is it okay so i i have to go back to my screen again here so <laughs> when i was in my screen uh, nansekran sir was we learned a lot about photography 
right? Yeah. Henry Cartier Bresson is yeah. one our one of our uh, you know and also uh, you know all the masters. So see, you, you have to understand that all that comes from somewhere. It's not an accident, okay? So what you learn is what will come out in the end. So somehow I feel that uh, off late, like you know, when I talk to younger generation and all of that, they're forgetting that learning is a phase, and it takes a lifetime, and you cannot jump that process. You cannot escape it. So even this black and white inspiration came from there. So what I was doing was what I liked. That's it. So how you do it is your personal choice. It's it becomes your style, right? So if you do black and white, it'll be very different than how I do black and white. I see high contrast imagery. You might see low contrast imagery, right? So that is your personal style. So I cannot comment on that. But what I can say is that where is the inspiration coming from? You have to go back to the roots. That's it. Sure. Siddharth, probably I may ask on behalf of some student. Sure, sir. <clears throat> okay. So you had a black and white and you have a color. At the time of shoot, for the purpose of monitoring, when you wanted this guard to be in black and white, you had a black and white image or you had a color image? Hello? Are you able to hear me? Hello? Uh, uh, one second, sir. I couldn't hear, hear you for a second. second. Hello? Yes, sir. Can you repeat the question if you don't mind. Yeah. Hello? Are, are, are you able to hear me? I can hear you now, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have been shooting Lucia, yes, sir. at the time of shoot itself, you know that this is going to be in black and white, this is going to be in color, isn't it? Yes, sir. So for the monitoring purpose, did you use color image or black and white image? Black and white image, sir. Completely. Okay, okay. Whichever segments. So what we did was we shot the, uh, I hope everyone's watched the movie. We shot the, um, the, the theater usher story in the first uh, of the film. And then after that, we, it was a decision that we took that, okay, we will shoot black and white entirely after shooting the entire portion because we want to give it a completely different uh, look. Otherwise, it will look very similar. We tried, we thought, okay, maybe we can give like a low, low saturation look or something like that. But then I think uh, Pavan was very instrumental in that decision that, okay, let's do this. Otherwise, what is the fun? So it was a decision taken and I shot the entire film uh, looking in the monitoring with black and white. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Yes. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Usually, color usually will will link it with the happiness. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. But whatever he was dreaming, that he wanted to be, isn't it? Yes, sir. But it was in black and white, and what was his present life? That was in color. No, sir. It's the other way around, actually. Uh, okay. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think actually the reality was in black and white. So because he has a pigmentation issue, mm. he, he has some problem in the eye. So that is why he can't see color. <laughs> no, no, whatever uh, he was there in his uh, dream, mm. he was wanted by everybody. Everybody liked him. Isn't it? He was so important guy. No, so it's the other way around actually. Actually, mm. the reality is uh, him being the actor. Mm -hmm. So he was dreaming the usher's life, the theater guy's life was the his dream. So. Okay, okay. From his perspective, it should be colorful, isn't it? I, okay, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I just just uh, just for uh, what to say, a discussion. That's all. So yeah, how do I mean, how do you, how, how do your mind was going, or it was insisted by the pavan uh, that no, it so should actually, be. The, yeah, the dream is uh, in color, sir, actually. Uh, all the dream segments are in color. The theater uh, portions, which is his dream, actually. Uh, the, so I don't know. 
because i did not uh, watch it i mean i did not have subtitle i could not get the right ah, okay, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. so it's a bit confusing <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, the yeah, reality yeah. is the reality and, is uh, yeah like, yeah, like. yeah on, uh, in, in the end it is fusing which is reality which is uh, dream yes, so yes. difficult to yeah. Yeah, i think we yeah. have to watch with the subtitle then only probably yes sir yes sir yes talk i'm not qualified to talk i could not understand some of the dialogues also yeah actually yeah that's yeah. the thing in the interview it is uh, there is a yeah, scene yeah, yeah. in the interview mm. scene where he reveals that uh, his dream is actually the uh, yeah 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 because i could watch sir. i could watch this in the sun next day not yes, in sir. Uh, uh, <laughs> there yeah, subtitles no subtitle. i don't know why they're doing it sir i was yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. why they're not putting subtitles on it mm. very silly <laughs> So, okay, carry on. Carry on. Okay, okay sir. So we'll go to the next uh, slide. Yeah. So, post Lucia, I have worked on a few films. Uh, I worked on Mr. Balaji Shakti's film, uh, uh, who is the director of Kadal and all of that. It hasn't released yet, but uh, it was a great experience. He's a national award-winning director, and it was such a. We shot it in uh, uh, Madura, Dindigal, sorry, and. Uh, Uh, for the first time i experienced something different it was such a we shot for 70 days almost and uh, we were shooting in the you know very hardcore real locations and uh, it was it was a life changing experience for sure working with such a great uh, director and then i worked with uh, kalyana samil sadam director aris prasanna on a documentary on uh, called on a quest and uh, uh, yeah and then yeah i think uh, you guys have seen limitless also i've sent you the links to it uh so i've been thankful i've been i've, I've been i'm quite grateful that i've worked with some really good people sensible people who i could connect with and uh, who i could explore you know new formats new genres new uh, uh new content so lucia had really was really a great uh, opening for me but something uh, that i realized uh, eventually was that i felt that i was repeating myself and uh, it was really getting to a point where i was i was like it felt like work it didn't feel like i was enjoying what i was doing so that is when i decided to take a break and uh, do my masters in uh, europe and uh, this was my process of like i said it's it's like you need to unlearn and relearn every few years every few days every few months it is a process you have to keep learning i think you can't avoid that if you feel that i know everything that is the day you stop learning you stop evo- uh, growing as a cinema- as a cinematographer so i did my masters in europe because i've always wanted to go there and i thankfully got it got scholarship and uh, so i wanted to i went abroad and stayed there for two years and uh, i found a new peer group who helped me to learn cinema all over again and uh, i started looking at films as an art form after going to europe because if you look at european films they they're very artistic very uh, they're not just entertainment but they they have a lot of history attached to it there's a lot of uh, uh, you know inspiration from you know old films and their own culture so and they make a lot of movies about existentialism and uh, social justice and stuff like that we also make movies about social justice but what i was saying there it's more of an art form unlike india here is it's like a mix of it's mostly entertainment there's a little bit of art so this is something that i've seen a clear division between european films and indian films and uh, again i learned new architecture if you look at uh, and the, how the light is very different from india and how the film culture is very different so it was basically my way of like unlearning and relearning cinema all over again and it were it it would have sounded crazy to a lot of people <laughs> if they know that after becoming a cinematographer you went back and do are you do you're doing your masters and all of that it felt silly to me also but i had to do it <laughs> i didn't have a choice i mean i had to do it for myself and uh, my own learning so i look at uh, i look at life i look at life in a very learning kind of thing it's not like a lot of people come to me and say that i want to make a movie and i'm like but why why do you want to make a movie like you know uh, it's not a, it's not like it's you're the first person on the earth to do this but why do you want to do it like you know what kind of films do you want to say what is your art what is where you come from uh, recently i was talking to my somebody and person said why do we do what we do and there is a question that i ask myself why do we do what we do 
and uh, i kept uh, so it's something that we have to like keep unlearning and learning uh, and become better as artists and cinematographers so post the rashma i came back in 2019 and uh, covid happened <laughs> so <laughs> and then i kind of like starting all over again in india and i had to make a decision between is it chennai bangalore or mumbai hyderabad and i've always already done a lot of work in chennai and bangalore so i wanted to explore new markets and i saw myself more in hyderabad and mumbai so currently i'm working on a, a hindi feature film with uh, uh, with a big actor so i'm just uh, we are in the pre production stage and hopefully once it all works out we'll go on on, on the floors so a lot of we i'm working on it a lot of pre production work a lot of planning so that is something that i would always tell you guys like plan a lot plan 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 because the shoot is just execution the real work happens before you know so sit on the drawing board figure out your planning the shoot is just it has to just happen like that you shouldn't think too much recently uh, one of my assistants uh, shravan is also here he is also ex mind screen shravan you want to say hi <laughs> if he is there yeah. yes sir hi hi sir mnj sir and either sir nice meeting of a long day yeah sure <laughs> and shrijita is also one of my assistants hello uh, hello just I, i i want to see ah, shravan want... put on your camera man sorry sorry i yeah. didn't get yeah where is he uh, it was on yeah, yeah he is there so, so. I, i i i had to scratch through sir <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. the name was srirangam shravan yeah 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 okay okay you are also from andhra isn't it yes sir yes sir 23rd batch 23rd batch yeah very recent yeah. only <laughs> yeah. now uh, lot of people got accumulated it's very difficult to connect the name and uh, face yeah so i wanted to see it <laughs> yes. okay fine fine good and abhishek is also here abhishek is there oh <laughs> abhishek <laughs> because there are so many abhisheks eh? so many stress ramesh eh? where is abhishek <laughs> say hello hi, abhishek hi hi <laughs> let Miss you, <laughs> I have to scroll through. Abhishek, Abhishek Gowda. Ah, yes, yes. We have we have we have to tell the full name. Abhishek Gowda. Means then I could remember. <laughs> Fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Other assistant is Sri Jita. She's not from my screen, but she's. Yeah, I was wondering who is she. <laughs> Good. <laughs> hello. Ah, yes. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> So these three, three of us, uh, we just, uh, we just finished. I think we did this for... all. Thing is, yeah. when you are talking, I'm not able to see your face. Let me see your face also. Shita, you have to say hello. Shijita, yes, yes, I see you. Fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have you. a, you have a, a right so dress to learn. It's a pleasure learn. to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Siddharth. Yes, sir. Thank so you. we we just uh, we just uh, finished one ad uh, recently for uh, Oziva with uh, uh, Samantha, so right? Samantha with Samantha. Yes, yes. Name, yes, yes I saw. So, I saw. Oziva, yes, Oziva, sir. Sam, Sam, Sam. Oziva, sir. Oziva. Yeah, Oziva. So But, one of the I can just explain the experience basically working with a star and all of that. Stuff. So the thing is that we had planned so much that we could shoot seven segments in like two and a half hours. And uh, if you, I, I don't know if you guys have watched the ad film. I think it's on the uh, side mm-hmm. of my screen and all of that. So uh, these guys have done such a great job. I just had to like tell them we planned so much. We planned for like five days, and uh, Shravan and Abhishek did a, such a great job with the lighting, the design. I mean, lighting, uh, you know, setting up the lights and all of that. And Shrita was the B B camera operator. So, Shravan, do you want to Abhishek? Do you want to like just talk about the experience on the ad film over? And Abhishek also and Shrita. Yeah. yeah. So, as sir said, uh, the the prep work was uh, very much uh, important since we had a very short time for the seven segments to shoot. We had only one day. I think mostly half a day we could call it. so the preparation was uh, into planning of the reiki and also the we also 
planned it in a Photoshop, like how to uh, set the lights and all that, the floor plan and all. So it helped us a lot uh, when we went uh, for the setting up lights. It was very, uh, uh, we had an understanding of that location geography so well. So it was very easy for us also to set up everything very fast and within given amount of time. Nice. Yes. Shravan, you want to add oh, anything? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, as Sidharnuni sir said, actually, the prep work was most important thing, sir, that uh, played a key role on we executing that ad perfectly. So just uh, concentrate on the prep work and everything will be going with the piece. Yeah, I, I would say that prep work is the most important stage, in, uh, especially when you're doing ad films and stuff like that. Yeah, Shrita, you want to talk about your experience? Uh, yes. So even during the prep work, uh, Siddhartha Nuni sir was very uh, clear about his idea. So he made sure we were all on the same page. That was also very important because each one of us come from a different background with our own uh, bringing our own uh, uh, twist to the project. But then here we are collectively working for one project so it was very important for us to stay on the same page uh, and be clear about this is the image that we're uh, going to deliver uh, and uh, that was very important for us because we were working collectively so that's the major thing that i learned that to communicate your idea to your team uh, in such a clear way so that everybody is on the same page and uh, we cannot afford any uh, we cannot afford much time on during the shoot to ch make a lot of changes. So in, during the prep work, that communication helped us a lot uh, to learn and to uh, deliver well on the shoot day. So that is also one very important thing to make sure all of us are on the same page. Yeah. Also, Shweta was the B camera operator. You want to talk about your experience doing that? Uh, yes, uh, so that was a, that was my very first experience as a, a B camera operator. Earlier, I've worked for a couple of uh, feature film projects as an assistant. Uh, for me, uh, the major thing was a prep work, prep work that we did, like all the others mentioned. So the prep work was so precise that it made everything on the shoot day very easy. Uh, not that we didn't have uh, new things, new troubles coming up on the shoot day, that's always there. But because we prepared so well uh, beforehand, that on the shoot day, we didn't, uh, the thing is, it's, we, you can't, uh, what I realized is, you don't have much time to think when you're shooting. So you have to, uh, I, I didn't know that as a, a person, but then, on the shoot day, you hardly have any time to think and uh, may have new ideas or creative ideas or creative thoughts. All that happens beforehand. So the creative process is the uh, pre-production and not the shoot day. The shoot day is like a war zone. You just, you have to be very quick. You have to be very spontaneous. You cannot wander off uh, into space thinking uh, about ideas. That's not the day you think about ideas. It's the pre-production. And uh, it gives you a lot of confidence on the shoot day. So for me, I got my confidence because of the preparation that we did beforehand. The three, four days preparation that we had. Uh, so like maybe it sounds very cliche, but then uh, pre-production is what it is. It sets, it sets your confidence on the day of the shoot. Sir, I have one question. Like I just yeah, wanted sure. to know uh, like what exactly you mean by the prep work? Like what all so I understand, like uh, storyboarding and like shortlisting. What else or what different uh, like should be our approach to get the right prep? See, is this the only like thing, this. like uh, the storyboarding and the shortlisting, or no. what else? It's it's a lot of things. Like you can't just say that okay, this is this will this is the end of it. The the thing is that firstly maybe. Uh, figuring out the light, figuring out the location first, right? Yeah. We need to know where we're shooting it, firstly. And uh, like I said, I, I'm a big architecture person. So I light up based on the location. I don't keep any lights inside the set. I always keep my lights outside the set. That gives me a lot of space for the actors to perform, right? Yeah. So so firstly, I, I want to understand the location, first, okay? 
and then i understand okay where are my lights coming from you know i'm figuring out the sun path i'm figuring out what time of day is a shoot and then i'm trying figuring out what kind of shots work work best for this film this i work with the director you know and then uh, mm-hmm. generally for an ad film it's pretty much set in stone what kind of shots we need uh, you don't have time for experimenting because uh, you know you don't have time for that yeah. and uh, if you, if you think of it each segment we shot in like 15 20 minutes okay. a total of seven so two and a half hours we shot like but 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 like you know with costume changes and uh, actors time off and stuff like that so uh, for that you need immense amount of confidence immense amount of uh, communication immense amount of uh, you know uh, like it's a war zone right you, you basically don't you will step on a line landmine if you do something wrong right on a film yeah, set yeah. it's different you have enough time to do all of that here the sh- the shoot is basically you you just shooting whatever you want to shoot right whatever is supposed to be shot and uh, uh, yeah lights and also camera testing okay yeah. what kind of lenses work for this shoot i i might shoot again more things for that aviva it was an uh, x alexa a 60 plus x60 set x60 x60 plus with master primes yeah. you guys can talk to my assistants also later you can connect with them get to know more about our working process you know yeah, sure. uh, you can always yeah. reach out to them right uh, okay. so that that's that. so yeah there's a lot that goes into it costumes Mm-hmm. what is the color what is the color scheme of the ad is it going with the brand you know so many decisions have to be made and generally ad films are a dop's medium director is there okay. but mostly it's a visual thing because it's like a 30 seconds one minute film right so a lot of importance is given to the visuals so you have to do everything sir also and uh, i just want to know one more thing about lucia like yeah. uh, how you thought of using like such a different you know uh, type of focal lens like i i saw like there were some sequences which was very wide and then you cut to close like how was it like so uh, with, like with i always Lucia. have this go on, go on. like yeah. i always have this pressure if i'm shooting something with the uh, uh, let's say pov and it's a it's a very wide angle shot and then if i want to show a close up or something how uh, to switch the focal lenses focal lens That well is- see lucia see the thankfully for lucia we didn't have the constraint of a producer okay uh, people came on board and said that look we want change in the kannada industry you guys do whatever you want okay yeah. so we bought the camera and then we were like let's go crazy all right that was the decision that was taken in the beginning and no. uh, we went with it man i mean there's no uh, we didn't want to keep a grammar we wanted to establish our own grammar see yeah, you yeah. understand visual grammar right visual grammar is basically what is the grammar of the film how english yeah. language has a grammar uh, likewise mm-hmm. uh, films has every film has its own grammar through color through lensing through uh, you know uh, short division uh, editing so what is your language you define the film to the language mm-hmm. one parayso was saying namma solradha da kada like what we say is the is the story there is no lang you create i mean otherwise what's the fun right yes sir. like if you look at uh, say shinder's place or like if you look at munich or every film has its own language and uh, as a creative artist you define the language who yes. decides it so like uh, i'm a big fan of jazz music okay so jazz jazz i don't know if you follow jazz music so jazz music the there's this artist who said recently i came across this he said uh, first you have to uh, learn the technicalities of jazz music and for the next 20 years forget it and that's when jazz happens <laughs> right <laughs> so <laughs> you learn jazz and then you forget it you basically play so much and you forget whatever you learned and then something new will come in that spot <laughs> so that's what i believe in and yeah that's why i am so i had a question yes sure Hi, good morning yeah uh, were there any particular filters or lights used especially while shooting in monochrome in film lucia no yeah nothing i mean we shot with basic uh, 
Zeiss lenses, blocks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, we use something called Technicolor Cinestyle. It was okay. uh, in in fact our film was in the Technicolor. It was yeah, supported by Technicolor some way. So Technicolor Cinestyle is a it's like a LUT kind of a thing. It's like a storing format. Uh, generally mm-hmm. DSLRs don't have it, so it gives more bandwidth, more uh, latitude. and it captures more color better color and stuff mm-hmm. so that is the extra thing that we did uh, so okay. i think that's what gave it that grainy feel or something yeah. like that gave me more mm-hmm. latitude to play with in the post production so we did some technical stuff new things for lucia so okay. that is the thing you need to keep learning right otherwise you will mm-hmm. never you need to know what's in the market what can yeah. give you the best result okay um, yes. yeah just so, hey, you just you just were... again Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, who who has asked this question about Pratik. using a filter? So, Pratik. 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 Yes, okay, okay. We will discuss it later in our class. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll just uh, finish this. So, so what is it? Choices. This morning I woke up with this thought. that life is about choices <laughs> it's about the choices that you make that will define you so sometimes you get like two films at the same time right and then you are like what do i do so what that your choice will define your path <laughs> so make the right choices do the right things find your uh, moral core your value systems keep them in place your in- i keep telling uh, my assistant uh, that your intent is what matters in the end uh you if your intent and your hard work matches and it's truthful you will get somewhere for sure so keep that going and uh, now we are in a ott era where everything is in uh, on the computer so it's different now things are very different it's a new uncharted territories we have to evolve we have to uh, keep uh, growing with the time changing times and uh, we have to adapt i don't know evolve but adapt ad- adapt ourselves to the changing times uh, recently i was in a counseling session and the person was saying that now the generation is changing every 3 years <laughs> so <laughs> it used to be 10 20 years in back then now it's 3 years apparently so <laughs> we're in very <laughs> tricky times <laughs> yeah so ad- ad- adapt adapt keep adapting and uh, something that i want to do as my personal project is the concept called cinema village Uh, there is something that i really want to do uh, for mentorship uh, mentorship is something that i really enjoy doing and uh, i really like talking to people and knowing them and like understanding where they come from and uh, there is a there is something that i want to do in the future maybe 5 10 years or something later where i want to construct a small village kind of a thing where everybody can come and engage and learn and uh, you know about cinema uh, you know in a very healthy environment because like i said film making is like a black hole <laughs> nobody knows what goes on in there so i think uh, this is something that i want to really do to you know help new newcomers to understand and uh, do mentorship and maybe you all can come and mentor there <laughs> we'll see <laughs> yeah so i think that's pretty much it so this is my email and this is my instagram you can follow me and if any questions you can email me and Shravan, Abhishek, and Shrijita are there. You can always uh, reach out to them for anything. Yeah, any questions you can. I'm done. So that's it. Yes. So there is this uh, short from Mockingbird, which I saw. Can I just share it for with everyone? Okay. I'm sending it. So I just want to know the lighting setup of this. Like, how did you got that flare? So you like, need to show me the shot, and then. Yeah, sir. It's uploading, sir. I'm uploading in the Zoom chat. Yeah, it's there, sir. Where do I see it? Sir, in the Zoom chat, you can just open it. For Zoom chat. Okay. Yeah, sir. I don't see it yet. Uh, or else I can just send you on maybe your mail ID. Okay. Is it sorting? Yes, sir. Yeah, what I suggest uh, we can uh, try to have a direct interaction with him. Yes, similar sir. thing. When things are going to be normal, definitely okay. we will try. We, we are planning to invite him okay, to a sir. direct interaction, also some sort of a demo, also, right? 
So okay, it is for all your things. Hmm? So uh, I can just share the screen quickly and just ask that. Yeah. I'm very curious yes, to yes. know about that. Thing. Okay, no problem. You can do that. Yes. So do next to the time. I can do that. Wait, sir. I'll just mail it up. No, okay. I'll make you my co-host and you can my. Yes, sir, I think that's better. So we can share the yeah. screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Now you can in share. The meanwhile, in, in the meanwhile, any other question can be I hmm. can take before that happens. Sir, can you see? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mm. This also. Interesting. Right. So, what is the question? What is the doubt? So, the lighting setup of this, or this flare was in post production, or how was it? No, no, it is on set. Yeah, yeah. It is basically. Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, uh, there was a window, a huge window there to yeah, the yeah. left, and there were. I put a direct sunlight. I mean, bounce okay. basically, and uh, okay. it was so. Yeah, it was just a flare. I mean, I didn't put any matte box or anything in front of the lens. Okay. So it just added to the story, basically, because it's like a yeah, okay. momentary thing and it's just like a spark. So it okay. used it as a tool to say that the two characters interaction, right? The two characters yeah, yeah, we yeah. haven't met in a long time. So it's like a spark. Yeah. It's like a mother and daughter meeting after a long time. And then yeah. that added that tinge of divine intervention, divine moment kind of a thing. It was just a, a through the window. I think there was a okay. source. That's it. Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So. Yeah. Uh, uh, once the storyboard is set, once you know the story of a feature film or something, does the location is been selected by the cinematographers or the directors or the like, any other? No, person? of course, cinematographer is very involved in the locations. Yeah, I mean, without that, what do you do? <laughs> like, yeah, locations define your look, right? You can't just mm -hmm. leave it to somebody. So the production yeah. designer, uh, the director, and the cinematographer, three of them come together and figure out mm -hmm. the locations together. Okay. Like according to you, what was the most uh, difficult part to shoot in Lucia? I enjoyed it too much. Uh, there was no difficulty. <laughs> okay. So for the dream sequence in Lucia, as in the color sequence, you had some color scheme in mind, like you were talking about LUT. So you had any pre LUT defined for it while you were shooting? See, uh, locations divide, define that define Lucia, okay? Uh, if you look at the theater, it was very vibrant, very rich, right? I just went with it. It's not, uh, because it's like a multicolor. Like basically uh, the reality was so dull, right? It's like devoid of color that the dream had to be- Yeah, like you have used a lot of colors in the dream. Yes. It was, uh, there was no palette. It was more like strong colors, what I would say. Like off yeah, can you, colors, can you well. share not, the, the, not the regular uh, kind of colors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go on. Can you share some uh, sort of article or something where we can learn more about color, like how and where to use the particular color for the particular emotion? I think Srijita will be able to answer this question very well. <laughs> she's the color theory person. <laughs> I mean, she's my assistant. So, uh, so there's a book called uh, If It's Purple, Someone's Gonna Die. Uh, it's a really beautiful book if you want to explore color in cinematography. It has a lot of insight. Uh, if it's purple, someone's gonna die. Is it, oh, yeah. It's a really and interesting also, book only about colors. Okay. I think you should. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, Vittorio Storaro talks about color a lot in his uh, work, right? So you can like look up, look him up, and then uh, Christopher Doyle's work. There are some cinematographers thrive on color, like Vittorio Storaro is one such cinematographer. And I've had the honor of meeting him in Poland. Uh, if you guys have an opportunity, you should visit Camera Image. It is 
the only festival for cinematographers in the world that happens every year and every year uh, Vittorio Storaro or Christopher Doyle go there so you can meet them there <laughs> I met both of them and it was really very nice any other question Siddharth, ah. hmm. you went abroad for uh, higher studies. Yes, sir. Uh, whatever work you do now, you see a difference uh, uh, from earlier work? 100%, sir. Because for, I example, think I, for example, uh, I have become, I used to do a lot of high contrast work, like low key yeah, lighting. Yeah. Earlier, earlier or now? Earlier. Hmm. Okay. I used to do a lot of low-key lighting. I think mm -hmm. that became my staple format. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I kind of broke that uh, mm -hmm. now, finally. And I'm mm -hmm. doing, uh, like if you look at uh, the recent Samantha ad also, I did a lot of glamour lighting, like like ad look. I'm, do, I'm mm -hmm. able to uh, also experiment with lighting so, and mm -hmm. also colors. I used to mm -hmm. use very strong colors before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I've learned to tone down. I think I'm also... As I'm growing older, I think I'm also like uh, toning down a lot <laughs> in my work and okay. trying to use subtle colors, softer colors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to use, uh, so that's uh, a lot of changes happened sir, in the last two, three years. But you said that earlier you were doing a lot of contrast lighting. Yes. Sir. Now you say the soft lighting. Do you think that uh, this type of lighting is decided by the uh, uh, mindset of the camera person or the content recommend? Content, sir. Definitely content. I think I didn't know how to do it before. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you did not know earlier? You tell me. <laughs> how to do soft lighting? Yes, sir. <laughs> what? What? Think, I'm just See joking, that. sir. I'm just joking, sir. <laughs> I, I'm just joking. <laughs> I won't say all this now. I think uh, it's also personal taste, no, sir. Like, I think I I used to like a different kind of uh, cinema before that, and okay. I think after going abroad, I started observing different kind of like. For example, in India, we our lighting is very our light is very different, right? Like mm -hmm. the way. The sun mm. falls. I think that is a difference. I think primarily I, I was exposed to a different kind of environment where I saw a lot of uh, uh, low contrast situations mm. because I was in Estonia where the sun uh, doesn't come up. <clears throat> like, uh, the sun stays in the sky for like one hour or something like that. So I've seen different kind of lighting scenarios and I think I, I learn from observation. And uh, because of that, I have like tried to imbibe that into my work now. Uh, because I've seen different things. And also I've worked with different kind of people, uh, like the cinematographers from uh, Europe, and their working mm. style is very mm. different. Even mm. the way the camera moves is very different mm. compared to what we do. Uh, mm. There are a lot of slow tracks, slow... Uh, uh, it, it slows down a lot. The way they mm. do their cinematography is very slow, mm. and, you know, uh, very poetic. Uh, if you would say. So I think I've learned to, to adapt that into my work. Okay, okay. So that has gone into your mind. Yes, sir, exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. But it need not be repeated. It can change, it depends on the content also. Absolutely, sir, 100%. Right? Yes, yes. Good. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I think the kind of work that I liked before that was very different. Uh, mm -hmm. But now I think the kind of work that I like is very different. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think inspiration is what I, uh, for example, mm -hmm. when I take up a movie, the first mm -hmm. thing that I do is I try to understand, okay, what mm -hmm. kind of uh, lighting can go into this film. Mm -hmm. So I try to refer a lot. I refer a lot mm -hmm. of work that I have watched before mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. uh, for example, when I was doing Lucia, my inspiration was clearly Christopher Doyle's work mm -hmm. and Vittorio Storaro's work, which is why mm -hmm. there's so much of color in it. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, But now I think uh, I've kind of like put that behind and now I'm more into Roger Deakins work or like mm. uh, a mm. lot of mm. European uh, you know uh, cinematographers works mm. so mm. when I'm when I'm trying to understand what kind of uh, cinematography can I do for a certain film which comes my way right now mm. I'm mm. trying to look at other inspirations I'm trying to look for uh, other paintings for inspirations uh, for inspiring my my work in the film so I think it's a matter of like what is in my mind and what connects what connects me to okay. the, 
ஒரு <laughs> Yes sir such a things can be applied to photography also for cinematography also uh, i i don't know about that so but i think it's a, it's a collective decision though sir like the director mm. and i think the look of the film is very defined by the director and cinematographer together and uh, no, you, i agree i agree but a cinematographer also is assumed to be a co-author of the film absolutely sir. yes when pawan kumar says that i will select my audience so that i can give a content uh, suitable for them i will not make a content uh, meant for the producer isn't it yes <laughs> yes that's what he said i remember rightly yes yes <laughs> absolutely that's what he said so, <laughs> so in that condition uh, whenever he changes his content he also got to change your visual style also isn't it yes sir 100% so you will not put it, your own yeah of course you will sir? discuss with him and try to uh, arrive at a right point where you can yes, uh, your sir. your style is incorporated yes that right. it's, it's a good thing yeah, uh, so that uh, okay we will that <laughs> <laughs> you know it is on behalf so, yeah. of students i am asking what i am going to ask is that okay. something may be different when we meet because since of only shop is asking uh some mm. students like to ask also but they will be hesitant so that's why i'm asking on behalf of them i i can talk nonsense also because you are my student <laughs> right <laughs> yes sir it's okay no 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 it is it's a good thing your your assistants are uh, uh, gifted you are, you made them to participate also actually i was about to ask so really any of you actually got a chance to operate the camera exactly that, that woman she told she was the second unit camera person so good and yes, you also sir. learn you make the your 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 uh, assist also uh, uh, see that they learn also good thing so they are all really fortunate sir we we are But also very proud proud to be working with siddha sir yeah good 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 thank you lot and so it's a good siddha sir I feel Siddha sir is also a great teacher. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, for Naturally, because I remember the question what I asked him when he came for the interview. <laughs> I don't know whether he remember or not. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he is hiding away. I don't away. think I answered it. <laughs> I Why, man? I don't think I answered it. So. <laughs> because see, it, it, this may be a news for your assistant because you are an electrical engineer, isn't it? Yes. Are you? Uh, so, <laughs> we ask about lightning Hi, sir. connected to the Hi, flight. Sir. Mm. Okay, we'll not go in detail now. <laughs> we would love to know, sir. You, Sorry. You can and ask him personally. When we meet in person, sir. <laughs> when we meet in person. Yes, sir. sure. Sure, sure, sure. Srijita, it is going to be like... Uh, my... What is that, sir? <laughs> yeah different stories okay same story told by three different people rashma 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 in my version i answered everything correctly sir <laughs> no, I, no no you have been selected man <laughs> exactly sir <laughs> which means uh, it said something which made sense yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what i am going to tell to your assistant it also our students also when siddhat was studying there was no digital right everything they learned in film only but definitely i'm sure that he is not going to demand that i need to learn about digital specially you understand what is the meaning of it most of our uh, 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 well known camera students they are working in the industry they were graduated when before digital was introduced and nobody felt that they have to learn anything specially for the digital right so that type of a conference should be there 
So these are things will change. Absolutely. Today maybe details, tomorrow something else yes. will be there. But your strength where it lies, you should know. Right? By looking at the uh, 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 fancy equipments and uh, big size equipment and all, don't think that this is going to produce any result. Right? <laughs> yes. It's all... That, that's one of the biggest be... <laughs> learnings. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So that confidence only we could give to the student. That's why he was overconfident. Right? But we'll tell them, you ought to respect all the seniors. They have learned their work with them in a hard way. Right? But six months cannot make anybody to be a an independent filmmaker immediately, fine. So it is only a just a first step, but it will be a very good foundation. They have option, opportunity to learn more and more. Your day will come, they will feel that frustrated. Nothing is coming, right? So yes, only sir. time and right type of a connections and friends will be helping at the time. But you ought to be sincerely attempting your thing. Sridhar, you want to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the schedule, eh? yes, we are not uh, actually decided the timing. Maybe around one and a half hour to two hours we wanted it. So up to 11 30 only I have decided. Yeah, yeah. It has gone beyond. I hope yeah. all our students got benefited. Uh, we are thankful to uh, Siddha's uh, for his presence along with his uh, assistant. Assistant. That leaves confidence to our present by students also. So everybody are normal people only. Hard work and patience and the real goal will definitely guide you to the right way. Also, they should write to uh, they should know how to build up the right type of friendship, knowing that yes, test. Hundred percent, sir. 100%. So that is important thing. And also, I just I just want to uh, add something, sir. So for yeah, yeah. for the girl, I think the solitary one girl who is in the group apart from mm -hmm. my assistant, mm -hmm. that is, I think Spritika. I, mm -hmm. I I think uh, like uh, like uh, I think. Can, can I see your face? Like, Smritika, switch on your, switch on your camera. <laughs> she went, I, I don't know if she's there. No, okay. no, she's there. No, she must be there. Smritika? Okay, no problem. Uh, oh, she's, yeah. there. <laughs> she's, there. she's there, she's there, she's there. Okay, I think the, for the two girls who are there, I think it's very important to encourage uh, female filmmakers in the industry because I feel terrible when, uh, like, uh, you know, when there's one girl and some hundred men out there. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons I had included Shijita also into my team because uh, I think generally girls are very hardworking. <laughs> just try to uh, work hard. I mean, uh, uh, just uh, don't, don't, don't be afraid <laughs> uh, on set and everything. And try to build a nice uh, peer group for yourself. And... Uh, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to like you know uh, be included uh, because it's very difficult <laughs> uh, for a girl to be on a set with so many men are there. So, uh, all the best. Just want to say that. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. She, she. I just wanted to thank you. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> She she will put an application to you only after the course. <laughs> I think she's going to come. I think after this, I'm going to get a message. <laughs> no, but that's okay. You're welcome. Uh, it's fine. You can. No, it's a it's a good thing, Siddharth. What you the encouraging words you have told to her. It's a really because uh, being a girl in the film industry. Now the scenery is different because they, we find so many girls in the film industry assisting my DOPs, assisting directors. So in all the all the technical areas, so it's a good thing. It's a good thing because my girls are coming forward to work in the films and they get to know the nuances of filmmaking. It's a really great thing, great thing. Yes, sir. Maybe Srijita can explain her experiences <laughs> as in her old... <laughs> No, the way she was they, the only only girl on set. <laughs> yeah, the way the, the the way she was expressing herself um, uh, about uh, working with you and uh, in the film industry, it, it gives us a uh, pressure to hear all those things. See, we can see the exuberance in her speech when she came uh, up talk. So that's a positive thing. Positive thing. Yeah. So. Thank you so much, 
Okay. So I think no, no. We yeah. will try to have one separate session with her uh, as a, as a women women cinematographer. Sure, sir. What was her experience and what is going to be encouragement for the future girls to enter this area? There can be a I mean, only thing we are worried about the corona when we are going to open this. So we are not sure <laughs> what things are going to be. All right, we'll try to definitely try to invite again. Okay, so that. Thank you. Shall we close? Sure, sir. Oh. Okay. Thank, thank, you, sir. thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Thank you. Nice meeting. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for hearing me out, patiently. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks.